Close your eyes and touch your breath. Feel your breath. Notice where you feel it in the body. When you say to watch the breath, it creates two kinds of misunderstandings. One is as if the breath were something there in front of your eyes, and you tend to separate yourself from it. And the second is that the knowledge is up in the head. Whereas actually the knowledge of the breath is throughout the body. And you're trying to get aware of all that knowledge, all that awareness throughout the body. So think of yourself as bathing in the breath, feeling the breath, wearing the breath. Get back in touch with the body. Because we're trying to train the whole mind. And if there are parts of the awareness that are shut off, there are going to be a lot of things you don't see. Because here we're going to have checking in on our minds. Even if there was someone who could read our minds, they wouldn't be checking in all the time. And even they can't tell what it's like for us as we experience it from ins the inside. So we're the ones who have to establish a full body awareness so we can depend on ourselves. This is an important principle in the, in the practice. As the Buddha said, he simply points out the way, and it's up to us to follow it which means it's up to us to try to understand what he's saying, and then to see how it applies inside, and then to test it again and again. Because after all, we're coming from ignorance. We're trying to go to knowledge. And the only way to gain knowledge in this way and overcome your ignorance is to look very carefully at what you're doing. Unfortunately, that's what the issue is, what you're doing. When the Buddha set out the Four Noble Truths, he explained suffering as something that you do, you cling. And the cause is also something that you do. The path is something that you can do as well. We're not trying to figure out the nature of reality out there. We're trying to figure out what is it we're doing that's causing unnecessary suffering and how we can stop. And that's something right here. But it involves opening up areas of the mind, opening up areas of awareness that you've kept closed for a long time. That means being very honest with yourself. Because the question is, why do you close things off? Well, there are parts of the mind that say and do things that you feel embarrassed about or you don't feel right about. You don't know how to get rid of them, so you just close them off. But that doesn't solve the problem at all, because they come out every now and then. And so the best thing to do is to have a whole body awareness, a whole mind awareness, and make the awareness solid enough so that whatever comes up, you can deal with it. You don't feel threatened. You don't feel that it's going to overturn you because your foundation is solid. So this is the important principle in the practice, learning how to depend on yourself. Make yourself the sort of reliable person that the Buddha was looking for in a student. When he said, bring me someone who's honest and no deceiver, someone who's observant. You can make yourself honest. You can make yourself observant. That way you make yourself worthy of the Dharma. And you become a reliable judge as, what, as to what it really is Dharma and what's not. And it's when you're independent like this that you really do become free not only free of other people's influences, but also free from the unskillful influences inside. So do your best to make yourself as reliable as you can.